Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, lecturer in computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform a one sample t-test in Excel. So before we start, let's take a look at the data and formula that we're going to use in this experiment. It's a one sample test, so I've just got one uh, column of data here and these data here represent the measurements for systolic blood pressure for 20 female doctors and we'd like to be able to see if this sample differs from the population mean of women uh, in the same age group. So our one sample t-test compares the mean of this sample here with a known value which is usually the population mean. And we run a one sample t-test when we don't know the population standard deviation or when we have a small sample size and in our case here 20 values is quite a small sample, anything less than 30 would be considered a small sample size. We make the assumptions that our data are independent and uh, are collected randomly, as is the case here, and also that they are approximately normally distributed for a t-test. As is usual with a statistical test, let's uh, declare our null and alternative hypothesis. Uh, our null hypothesis is that the population mean is 120, so that's the systolic blood pressure value for the pop general population, studies show is 120, and our hypothesis is that there's no difference between this and our sample, and our alternative hypothesis is that the population mean is not equal to 120, in other words that there is a difference between my sample and my population. And we're going to conduct this test at an alpha value of 0 0.05, remember you the researcher set this value. So we're going to use a formula to calculate our test statistic, which is called T, and you can see in the formula here that it consists of four parts. The first part, X bar, well, that's the mean of our sample over here, so we're going to have to calculate that. And we subtract from that mu, which is the population mean, and we use a, put a value of 120 for that, because that's what's given to us in the hypothesis. Then we divide that by S, which is the sample standard deviation, so we'll have to calculate the standard deviation of these 20 values here, divided by N, which is the sample size, uh, square root of n, the sample size, and we have to count the number of values that are here. So I'm just going to move my um, coloured box out of the way here, and we see we've got our uh, five values laid out ready to receive values. So let's put them in. Our population mean is straightforward enough. That's 120, as specified in the hypothesis. Our sample mean, we need to calculate that, so I'm going to use Excel's average func function for that. So type in equals and the word average, um, opening bracket, and just with my left mouse button, I'm going to select all the values from cell A2 down to A21 over here on the left-hand side, put in a closing bracket, and that should give me uh, the sample mean for the 20 values here. And we can see that it's 130.05. And already we can see that there is a difference between the sample and the population mean, and giving us an early indication that we have found a difference. But we don't know yet if that represents a significant difference. Our sample standard deviation, we can use an Excel function to calculate that, so type in equals, and STDEV is the function name. You can see that there are several of them here, but it's important we choose the right one. STDEV.S is the function that uh, estimates the uh, deviation based on a sample. Uh, P would be for the population, so .S is the appropriate one here, so double click on that, and we'll open bracket would be there, select all the data again from A2 down to A21, uh, closing bracket, and that gives us a sample standard deviation of 9.96. Our sample size here, well, we can count them visually, but let's use a count function. It's equal to C-O-U-N-T, opening bracket, and again, select the same data here on the left-hand side. So by using cell referencing here, if any values change, you're adding any more values, you can use the same functions. So now we have our four um, values here to put into our formula. So let's uh, start to work out our obtained t, and I'm going to do this in two parts. So I'm going to work out the numerator, which is the top half of the formula, and that's equal to, as we can see, x bar minus mu. So just using cell referencing, I'm going to type in here, equals um, x bar, which is 130.5, minus mu, which is 120, and press enter. And we can see that there's a difference between the means of 10.05. Now let's work out the denominator. And we can see here that that's the um, sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So I'll type in equals uh, so standard deviation of 9.96 divided by, and use the square root function, SQRT, um, opening bracket, and select the sample size of 20 here, and closing bracket, and that should give us uh, our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n, which is 2.227. And then my obtained t then is simply one value divided by the other, so it's equal to 10.05 divided by 2.227. So now we have our test statistics. So this value of 4.512 is our obtained t. 
Now, we still don't know whether this represents a significant difference between the sample and the population, and in order to determine the level of significance in this, we're going to need to look up um, um, a, a, va a value from a statistical tables. So I uh, have here the uh, t-distribution t tables, and uh, on this table is our critical value. Now we can see to determine the critical value we need to know what row to choose and we need to know what column to choose. So we need, for a row, we need to know the numbers of degrees of freedom. So we have to go back and take a look at that. And we're going to do a two-tailed test as mentioned earlier on. So we're going to need a value from the column that shows 0 0.05. So let me go back to my uh, spreadsheet here for a second. So I need degrees of freedom, df, and that's simply um, n minus 1. So that's equal to our value 20 minus 1 which is gives us 19 degrees of freedom. So and we're and our alpha value we've specified already is 0 0.05. So when I switch back to my tables, then if I select row 19, just highlighting here, across this row somewhere is my critical value. And when I move across then for the two tail line here at the top, I select the uh, column value of 0 0.05. And that tells me then if I go down and crisscross here, that my critical value is uh, 2.093, that's on line 19 and column 0 0.05. So my T crit is 2.093. So let me put that in here. My T crit is equal to 2.093. So I can see now that my T value is higher than my t critical and that gives us enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis that there's no difference uh, or, uh, between the sample and the population in favor of the alternative that there is. So if I can look at that visually, let's bring in a distribution chart here that I've drawn, and um, we can see our t distribution and our t critical value represents the, the border between the reject region to the right and the fail to reject region to the left. This is exaggerated, this is very large just so that we can see it. And this is a, the critical value at an alpha equal to 0 0.05 divided by 2. Um, our t-statistic is greater than that, so it's going to fall into the rejection region. So therefore, I have visual evidence here that my obtained t-statistic is greater than the uh, critical value. Therefore, I have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. In other words, there is a difference between the systolic blood pressure of these 20 female doctors compared uh, to the population of females of, of the same age. And one could conclude from this that perhaps uh, being a doctor has, uh, has more stress and therefore leading to higher blood pressure. So that's how you conduct a one-sample t-test. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.